Oh, when you're good. Go. Okay, so today, uh, Miss Ferreira and I are going to be doing a read aloud. And after the read aloud, we are going to give you a STEM challenge to do that goes along with this book. So that'll be in the second half of the video. So the book we are reading today is called One Plastic Bag. And it's by Isa Tu Cisse and the Recycling Woman of Gambia. This takes place in Gambia. Isa Tu walks with her chin frozen. Fat raindrops pelt her bare arms. Her face hides in the shadow of a palm leaf basket and her neck stings with every step. Warm scents of burning wood and bubbling peanut stew drift past. Her village is close now. She lifts her nose to catch the smell. The basket tips, one fruit tumbles, then two, then 10. The basket breaks, Isa too kicks the dirt. Sounds like something I would do. Something silky dances past her eyes, softening her anger. It moves like a flag flapping in the wind and settles under a tamarind tree. Isa too slides the strange fabric through her fingers and discovers it can carry things inside. She gathers her fruits in the bag. The basket is useless now. She drops it, knowing it will crumble and mix back in with the dirt. Four goats greet Isa too as grandmother Mumbe emerges from her kitchen hut. Hurry in before the rain soaks your beautiful mumba. Isa too scurries in and grandmother serves spicy rice and fish. Rain drums on the creaking aluminum roof. I broke your basket, she confesses, but I found this. Plastic, grandmother frowns. There's more in the city. Day after day, Isa too watches neighbors tote their things in bright blue or black plastic bags. Children slurp water and Juan Joe from tiny holes, poke holes in clear bags. Market trays fill with minties wrapped in rainbows of plastic. The colors are beautiful, she thinks. She swings her bag high. The handle breaks. One paper escapes, then two, then ten. Isa too shakes off her paper. Another plastic bag floats by, and she tucks her things inside. The torn bag is useless now. She drops it to the dirt, as everyone does. There's nowhere else to put it. Day after day, the bag she dropped is still there. One plastic bag becomes two, then 10, then 100. Plastic isn't beautiful anymore, she thinks. Her feet step down a cleaner path and the thought flows away. Years pass and Isa too grows into a woman. She barely notices the ugliness growing around her until the ugliness finds its way to her. Isa too hears a goat crying and hurries toward grandmother's house. Why is it tied up? Where are the other goats? Inside, the butcher is speaking in a low voice. Many goats have been eating these, he says. The bags twist around their insides. Animals cannot survive. Now three of your goats and so many other goats in the village have died. Grandmother's powerful shoulders sag. Isa too must be strong and do something, but what? Okay. What can we do? Isa too asks her friends. Let's wash them, says Fatim, pulling out Omo soap. Marum grabs a bucket and Incha fetches water from the well. Peggy finds clothespins and they clip the washed bags on the line. As the bags dry, Isa too watches her sister crochet can you teach me? Wow, yes. Her sister shows Isatu the stitches, then hands her a metal tool. Isatu's fingers busy themselves in, out, around. Jared Jeff, thank you. Isatu finds a broomstick and carves her own tool from its wood. What's that for? Fatim asks. Isa too pauses. She and Peggy have an idea. But will their friends think it's crazy? Will the idea even work? Nervously, she explains the plan. 
One friend agrees to help, then two, then five. The woman cut bags into strips and roll them into spools of plastic thread. Before long, they teach themselves how to crochet with this thread. Naka Ligebi asked grandmother, how was the work? Nadanka Nadanka answers Isatu, slow. Some people in the village laugh at us. Others call us dirty, but I believe what we are doing is good. The woman crochet by candlelight, away from those who mock them. Until a morning comes when they will no longer work in secret. Fingers sore and blistered, Isatu hauls the recycled purses to the city. One person laughs at her, then two, then ten, then... One woman lays dull dullishy coins on the table. She chooses a purse and shows it to one friend, then two, then ten. Soon everyone wants one. Isatu fills her own purse with Dalashi. She zips it shut and rides home to tell her grandmother. She has made enough to buy a new goat. When she passes by a pile of rubbish, she smiles because it's smaller now. She tells herself one day it will be gone and my home will be beautiful. And one day, It was. All right, so here's what you're going to need to make your own plastic bag bracelets at home. So you need a pair of scissors, tape, colored duct tape is best. And that way it's pretty. Plastic bag. Which I'm sure you guys have a ton of. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my plastic bag. I chose this nice blue one and I'm going to cut a big strip. So I'm gonna choose the middle of this bag just cause it's got that print. So it'll show up. And I'm gonna cut it as straight as possible, but it's okay if it's not perfect. And if you want at home, you can try to choose um, a cool colored bag since this is gonna end up being a bracelet you wear. So Miss Ferrara was smart and she chose a blue bag cause she thought she would like a blue bracelet. It'll go great with my shirt today. Mm, oh yes. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it pretty thick. So I'm gonna go to about here. So that's probably about four or five inches. And then I'm gonna cut all the way down. Now you can cut to whatever thickness you want, depending on how thick you like your bracelets. Mm. All right, so I have my thick strip of bag. Then I'm going to tape it to the table so that it's nice and secure so that I can easily work with it. Any kind of tape at home can work. So if you just have regular clear tape, that works. If you have masking tape, we all know that's Miss Gailey's favorite. You can use that. So now that it won't come off, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna cut it into three strands, which means I'm gonna cut two big cuts along it and I'm gonna leave about an inch at the top. Okay, so now I have one, two, three pieces. And do you notice how Miss Ferrara didn't cut it all the way to the top? The strand is still intact up here. Okay. So now we start making our bracelet. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna braid. Now, if you've never braided before, it's super easy. All you're gonna do, take this piece, you cross it over the middle, and then you're gonna take the piece on the end and cross it over the middle. Then you're just gonna keep going. You're gonna pull it nice and tight and keep going. So once again, piece on the end, over the middle, piece on this end, over the middle.
So our final step, now that we have this beautifully braided bracelet, you are going to tie the end because I don't want all this extra stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie a knot at the bottom. And then once you tie that knot at the end, okay, there's still gonna be a little bit extra floopy stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and just trim it. That way it looks a little bit nicer. And then if you notice at the top, we have this huge piece from the beginning. So I'm gonna do something similar. I'm gonna tie a knot at the top. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut off some of the extra material. Now, if this little extra bit at the end bothers you, Miss Ferrer suggested that we can take our tape and actually go ahead and tape this little extra part down that way. And if you have colorful tape at home, it'll add some color to your bracelet. So you see how I tape that? I'll go ahead and do it to the other end. Oh, there we go. That's a little big. And then once you have both ends taped, if you want to do that, you have your beautiful bracelet. Okay, so to finish off my bracelet, I'm going to take a little piece of tape. Just like that. And I'm going to measure it to my wrist. And I'm going to leave mine a little bit big so that I can just slip it off after. So I'm going to leave it about there. I'm going to take this piece of tape. And just wrap it around like that. And there we go, now I have a nice finished bracelet. It slides on nice and easily, and it looks super cute. All right, so um, your job now at home is to go ahead and make those bracelets and recycle those plastic bags. Be sure to send us pictures of what your bracelets look like, and we are going to challenge you to come up with some other creative things you can do with plastic bags. Uh, be sure to find our emails below so you know where to send them. Good luck.